Have you ever wondered why in PB industry depart sections are used as a rafter or column member? Is it only for economic design? Also, how these tapered profiles and section depths are calculated along the span? In this video, I will not only answer all these questions but also cover the design basics and selection of tapered member for any PEB structure and how we can optimize the overall steel usage using variable profile. Hi, my name is Shurajit Ghosh and welcome to the seventh part of steel structure optimization. Steel optimization is a precise job which involves assessment of the structural behavior based on the applied load and accordingly use the material. In the last six part of this series, I have discussed about various optimization technique, how we can select the most economic section using the inbuilt iterative section selection routine of STAT with the help of select and select optimized command. Also in the last part, I have discussed how we can distribute steel far from the neutral axis by converting a hot rolled white flange section to a castellated or cellular beam. You can go through these videos for more details. Till now, during steel optimization, we have selected uniform profile as an optimum section. Though the section force vary, Still, there is no change in the section dimension throughout the span. Do you think this approach is correct? Obviously no. If the force change along the span, then why don't we reduce the section depth where the force is low? And that is the basic concept of tapered profile. Assign adequate depth where it is required, else reduce the depth. How? that I will discuss in this video. Consider this steel warehouse structure. This is one of my old projects and I want to use this model to discuss how we can optimize the steel usage for this structure. This type of structure is very common in the PEB industry and this can be considered as a case study. It has a length of 45 meter with 9 base in one direction and 20 meter in the cross direction. In the longitudinal direction, unsupported length of this member is only 5 meter with constant moment and there is not much scope to reduce the steel usage. But in the cross direction, the unsupported span is quite large and that gives us plenty of opportunity to optimize the steel usage by using proper optimization technique. Remember the last video where I have discussed why the moment and deflection values are high for a long unsupported member? This pen demands higher section and we need to utilize the steel sections properly. First thing that comes into mind, we can use the default steel optimization technique available in STAT using multiface select or select optimized command, right? If you don't know about multiphase optimization or what is the difference between select and select optimized command, then you should go through part 1 to 5. Let's try to optimize this structure first using two level optimization. Before assigning these commands, I want to discuss about another important thing. In reality, this raptor is a continuous member from the column till the apex. But to connect the purlins with the raptor at intermediate location, we have divided it in four parts. Else the load transfer will not be proper and there will be some structural instability condition. So these four analytical members are part of a physical member with same section property. As physical member design is not yet implemented instead, program designs all these members individually both for check code and select command. And different sections might be suggested during optimization depending on the load. We can avoid that using group command, which I will discuss later. For first trial, let's modify this model a bit and remove the bracing and purlins from the first span and merge the raptor 
into a single member. I will try to optimize the first span and check what stat suggest as the optimum section for these members. A wide flange I section ISMB 350 is assigned to these members. For design, IS800-2007 code is used. Few design parameters like DFF, STP and stiffener is also assigned. And for optimization, multiple select command is used. As you can see, for first stage, allowable ratio is specified as 0.8 followed by a select command. Then analysis command is assigned. Change the ratio to 0.9 and once again program will select the optimum section using modified force. Finally, we will analyze the structure again considering the updated section followed by ratio 1 and check code command. This multiple select, analysis and check code command completes the multiphase optimization routine. This is already discussed in the fourth part. You can check that video for more details. After analysis from the post-processing mode, we can check the utilization ratio table. Here we can notice that the critical ratio for these members are close to 0.85, which is good. After optimization, assigned 350mm I section is modified to a wide beams I section and program suggest that at least 600mm section is required for these raptors. We can further review the design results from the output file. I have already assigned track to comment and I want to know why such a huge section is suggested. Three sets of design results are reported. First two are for section selection. We can check the last instance for member 78. Critical ratio is reported as 0.846. Critical load case is 100 and location is 10.44 meter. Extreme end of the member, which is at the column end. Green color indicates the start of the member. Now we can further check the detailed design results from the summary table. Critical ratio is for bending plus axial interaction check at the column end. Also the major axis bending ratio at this end is quite high, which is very normal. For minor axis bending, shear and compression, the ratio is very small, close to 0.2. So for these raptor members, the governing condition is the major axis bending. This is what we expected. For a long span member, bending moment should be high and that governs during section selection. I want to further check the moment value and distribution for the first span. We can easily isolate this span using these view tools and then switch on the MZ diagram for load case 100 which is the governing load case. The moment seems high at the column end. We can further switch on the values on the diagram from the annotate option. I am only interested to know the value at the end. As you can see, the major axis bending moment at the column end is 248 kN whereas it is only 84 kN at the apex end. That's a large difference. Also, if we look at the BMD, we can easily notice that the moment gradually decreases from the column end, reduced to zero at some intermediate point, and again increase, but still the value is much smaller compared to the other end. And the optimum section is suggested considering the highest moment value. Do you know how program finds out the optimum section? It is similar to the member design philosophy. First, program divides each member in 12 sections. That means there are 11 intermediate design points along with the start and end node of the member, all total 13 design sections. These 13 sections are designed individually for all load case. So for a single load case, there are 13 sets of design results. 
and considering all load case there are 13 n sets of results among those whichever is critical that governs member selection process for the adapter member bending moment at the column end is very high and that's why this end governs the section selection process and a higher depth section is selected which can resist this moment. This is just a rough idea. For more details on the design philosophy, you can go through the second part of steel design discussion on IS 800-2007 code which is available in my YouTube channel. I think it is clear now that the high moment at the column end is the reason why a 600mm section is recommended as an optimum section and it is assigned throughout the span of the member. Here comes the problem. This section is not an optimum section if we consider the other part of this rafter member. The major axis bending capacity of this section is 351 kN which is uniform along the span and compared to 248 kN moment, it is okay. But if we consider the moment value at any intermediate location just by reviewing the BMT, it is really low. We can also confirm this from the force table. For example, at midpoint, it is just 56 kN. At three-quarter point, it is 104 kN. And if we calculate the utilization ratio at this location, it is around 0.3. That means this huge section is not utilized properly and this section depth is more than the required depth at other location of this disruptor. Are you not convinced yet? Check this Excel template that I have developed for member design as per IS 800-2007 code. Well, it is not complete yet and I am still working on this. Here, I can define all the design parameters along with the section dimension, import all the load keys from a STAD model, and design any analytical or even a physical member in a single click. Not only that, it can be used for tapered member optimization. This template can suggest the most economic tapered profile for any selected member like this raptor or for all members. I am not going to use this code today to calculate the tapered member dimensions. I will discuss this template later in the PEB series and let you know how I have implemented tapered member optimization. For this model, the concerned member is 78, critical load case is 100 and if I click on design, see? Critical design ratio at each 13 sections for all design checks are reported. If I compare the results with the STAD output, the critical ratio is 0.846 which is for bending plus compression interaction check. Ratio for major axis bending is 0.707 at the extreme end. This template is very accurate and all the values match with STAD. Now check the bending ratio at other location of this member. Bending moment varies from 248 kN to 85 kN. We have already confirmed this in the model. Bending capacity is constant throughout the member which is 351 kN. Check the bending ratio. It gradually decreases to 0.1 from the column end and then again increase to 0.3. Nowhere except these last three sections, the ratio is greater than 0.5. If we consider the interaction check ratio, these values are also smaller than 0.3. This indicates 600 mm depth is not at all required at other part of this member and we can further optimize this section. What is the solution then? We know that bending capacity about the major axis depends on the overall depth of the section. For better understanding, I have compared the major axis bending capacity of several sections with same flange dimension and web thickness, but the overall depth is different. 
If we look at this table, we can notice that the bending capacity value is reduced by approximately 60 kN meter for each 100 mm or 4 inch decrease in the overall depth, which seems promising. So, where the moment is small, we can easily reduce the capacity. That means we can reduce the section size. For proper optimization, we should follow the bending profile of the raptor and gradually decrease the section size from this end up to the apex. Apply the same concept to the column members. For column, bending moment value is high at the top of the column, but moment at the bottom of the column is almost half of that. If we follow the bending moment diagram to assign a section, we can select a section with higher depth at the top and gradually decrease the depth at the bottom with adequate axial capacity. This is the final section profile that we have determined from the moment diagram. Now this looks familiar, right? Same tapered profile is used in any PAB or steel structure and we finalize this profile entirely based on the structural behavior and demand. We can further optimize this section. Check this portion. Bending moment is really very small, which means we can further reduce the section size here and then gradually increase it till the apex. This type of tapered profile is also very common and more economic. Now we need to figure out the depth of the section required at different location of this member. For this, we will consider the original model with the analytical raptor member. Once again, I will consider the first span only and this time I will optimize all these members individually using multiple select and perform analysis command followed by a check code command. Effective length parameters along with other parameters are already assigned. Check the results from the post processing mode Utilization table. Couple of members fail, but that is okay. We need to further optimize these members. As you can notice here, I have assigned an I section with 350 mm depth, and after optimization, program suggests a section with 600 mm depth at this end and 450 mm depth for the rest of the span. So we can assign a tapered section with 600 mm depth at this end and 450 mm depth at the apex end. This is just a rough estimate. Actual depth along with flange dimensions are determined after several other checks. At the inflection point, we can further reduce the section size to 350 mm depending on the moment value. Now we have finalized the profile along with the section depth. But it is not this simple. There are several other factors which governs the section depth. For example, when we increase the section depth, D by T ratio of the wave is also increased, which makes the wave vulnerable to local buckling. There is a high chance that the wave class is changed and if it comes as semi-compact or class 3 section, then elastic section modulus will be used for capacity calculation rather than the plastic section modulus which will reduce the section capacity. And if the wave class is slender, a portion of the wave is ignored which further reduce the bending capacity. Also, there are few serviceability criteria like the condition specified in clause 8.6 of Indian code which needs to be satisfied at all location. Similarly, when we reduce the section size, Shear capacity along the y-axis is reduced. If the shear force along y is under 60% of the shear capacity, then there is no problem. But once the shear force is more than 60% of the capacity, then bending capacity is affected. In such case, contribution of the wave for bending capacity calculation is proportionally reduced as suggested in clause 9.2 of IS 800-2007 code. 
So, any reduction of the section size can reduce the bending capacity more drastically. Bending capacity is not directly proportional to the section depth and it is not correct to decide the section depth just based on the bending moment. If the axial force or shear force at any section is high, that will affect the interaction check results and in such case, we need to provide higher section depth though the bending moment is low. Do you want to know how much steel we can save with this approach? To answer this, I have compared the steel usage between two models. In the first model, taper profile is assigned to all the rafter and column members. And in the second model, an I section is assigned and optimum uniform profile is selected by the program. All design parameters are assigned including effective length, STP and stiffener. And these are same for both these models. Additional group command is also assigned to the second model to ensure same section throughout the raptor. To get the MTO information, I have used this custom template which I have developed. If you want to know more about this template, check my previous video. As you can notice in the MTO summary, total steel weight for the first model with taper member is 75 metric ton, whereas it is around 92 metric ton when uniform profiles are used. This proves that taper member is far more economic than a uniform profile when section force varies along the span. Do you know we can use a hot rolled section with smaller depth, cut the section along the length in slope, then reverse one of the cut pieces and weld it to create a tippered member? This is similar to the castellated beam manufacturing process. And with this approach, we can use a white flange section with smaller depth in a long span. Just increase the depth where it is required and reduce the depth where the demand is low. Also, if the bending is high only at the end and constant at other portion of the member, then we can use a uniform profile with haunch at the end and this higher depth will resist the localized high bending moment. We can also use castellated tapered member which further reduce the steel usage. There are so many other optimization techniques which we can follow to minimize the steel usage. If you want to know more about this, let me know in the comments. That's all from me today. I hope you have enjoyed this session. Thanks for watching.